you can find a, a handle, I think there's some like for that there. I think it's thinking page 195. And I won't be singing uh, verse 2. I'll give, uh, give you guys a few minutes to find that. If you can't find it, you probably know it. it's nothing but the blood of Jesus.
so uh, this morning, uh, we're going to be continuing our series in Hebrews, but before uh, we get started, I want to uh, announce uh, a, a new um, initiative to help us all take in Scripture and, and remember God's Word, so uh, dig deeper. Uh, we'll begin on March 1st and uh, for the next 30 months, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the, the New Testament and also add in some Psalms. And uh, the, what, what we're going to do is spend about 30 minutes a day uh, to read a particular passage. And so in March, starting on March 1st, we're going to start in Hebrews and we're going to take the first six chapters. So the way this is going to work, on March 1st, you're going to read Hebrews chapter 1 through 6. We'll take about 30 minutes. Day 2, you're going to read Hebrews 1 through 6. And then starting somewhere about midways through the month, we're going to transition uh, from chapter 7. To... And so what you're going to do is you're going to dig down into certain passages, and yeah, you've read it one day, and then you're going to come back and read it again, but... You really need to pay attention to, as you read this, you'll see some things. The Holy Spirit will show you some things that you didn't quite see before. And, and, and when you feel the presence of the Holy Spirit as you read uh, the Word of God, you can pause and, of course, pray. Pray the Scripture back to, to, to the Father. So this will be a, an initiative that starts uh, March 1st. It's dig deeper. And so we'll be going over it time and time again to to explain and kind of wrap around and make sure we're, we're, we're all in this together. Uh, supplemental reading, supplemental to the messages and to the Bible studies that, that we have. So I encourage you to, to embark upon that journey with us uh, to help uh, have you grounded in the truths of Scripture, to help myself grounded in the truths of Scripture. So March 1st, read Hebrews chapter 1 through 6, March 2nd, 1 through 6, and so on till about the Ides of March, 15th of March, and then we'll start uh, to go over the second half of the book. So, everybody got it? If you got it, raise your hand. All right, good. <laughs> I did better than what I thought I was, maybe one or two people. Tonight we're having a Bible study, continues uh, uh, we're on our series about the Holy Spirit. And then uh, tonight it's gonna be, we're going to be looking at uh, Romans chapter 8 and, and looking at uh, the presence of the Holy Spirit during suffering and pain and prayer. So maybe if you're going through one of those seasons in your life right now where it's difficult, it seems dark, and it seems like God has abandoned you, and you don't really know where to turn, and you're hurting, I would encourage you, uh, if you can, to make it out tonight. That's what we're going to be looking at. So uh, again, suffering, pain, and prayer, continuing our series uh, on the Holy Spirit during our Bible study, 7 o'clock tonight. So this morning, uh, open your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 4. And we're picking up right where we left off last week. Hebrews chapter 4, starting in verse 14, and we're going to read all the way uh, over to chapter 5, ending in verse 10. Since then, we have a, a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins and those of the people. And no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also 
himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by Him who said to him, You are my Son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of His flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to Him who was able to save Him. And He was heard because of His reverence. Although He was a son, He learned obedience through what He suffered. And being made perfect, He became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey Him, being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So Father, we thank You again for this day. And Lord, we thank You for Your Word, and, and it's so valuable to us, and it's a, 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 the greatest gift we have outside of Your gift of grace and salvation. So Lord, we need this to show us uh, the way to go and to show us Your nature, Lord. Teach us this morning, Holy Spirit. Lord, a lot of times we go through life and we wonder if You really hear us. Or can You really sympathize with the pain that we're experiencing? Lord, no doubt sometimes some of us wonder, does God really know where I'm at right now? And so, Lord, through Your Word, You tell us that You not only know, but You sympathize and You understand our weaknesses. And not only that, that we can trust You, that we can hold fast. Flying. Okay. Matt, is, is anybody in here uh, afraid of heights? I am. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty afraid of... Afraid of heights. And so is, has anybody here who's, who has fear of flying, have you ever flown on an airplane? Anybody? Yeah, all right. So we're narrowing it down. All right. So, so if you've been afraid of flying, you've been on, on the plane, how, how many white-knuckled it, didn't know you was going to make it, and you were terrified for your life? All right. So you can get from point A to point B, but not have enough faith to enjoy the trip. And that's a picture of the Christian life. That's a picture of the Christian life. And, and, and uh, people have enough faith in, in Jesus uh, to, enter into, to experience salvation, but they never push forward into maturity. Therefore, their, their, their experience is one of frustration. They're frustrated. They're constantly frustrated and, and and maybe they're even drifting and and, and pos possibly apostasy and and turning away uh, which is what the author is saying right here in Hebrews he's saying that's a danger of of drifting and being frustrated is because they don't know enough about their savior Jesus Christ that they're terrified just like flying and when you're flying if you talk to a pilot you understand that there's really not that much to be afraid of you're afraid of turbulence but explain to you you realize that actually walking and driving are more dangerous than flying walking especially if you're that student that I mentioned last Life's really dangerous at the time I'm driving through there. But no, when you have knowledge, you can enjoy it. And, and so here's the context of what our passage is this morning. Things were about to get really bad for the church here, for the audience of Hebrews. And, and if their knowledge of Jesus wasn't full and robust, the, the, the dangers of drifting and turning away from the faith was serious and it was a real threat and, and it was facing everybody in the church. And I believe there's no difference today. People have such a, a low knowledge of Scripture and a low knowledge of Jesus that we think that God is not interested in us. We think that He's distant and, and alone, not approachable like Scripture declares that He is. And so as a result, there's all sorts of confusion about the character of Jesus. Is He distant? Is He far away? And, and, and this is dangerous. And there's all, all sorts of pitfalls there. 
And so church, we must be as knowledgeable as, as we can be about the deity of Jesus Christ, about the nature of Christ, about the nature of God, so that when we know that, we can survive when hard times come. That's what's going on for the audience here in Hebrews. They were going through some very serious times and if they didn't have a, a full grasp of what of who Jesus was and and how he's their high priest that that when they're faced with being impaled or being put in prison that they're going to turn away from the faith so the author knows that and he senses that he prophetically sees that and discerns that and so he challenges them and he uh, will begin to explain to them the basis for their trust in Jesus. So, I'm going to read these two verses again. This is the, the summary statement of our message this morning. Back to Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So, so that's our, our, that, that should define our reality this morning is that, is that we've got a Savior that has passed through and therefore we need to hold fast to stay committed. And He understands our weaknesses. He understands what you go through. He understands what I go through. But we've got immediate access to the Father. We can receive mercy and we can receive compassion. We can receive grace and we can receive love. And this is going to help us in all of our trials. So this morning we're going to look at a couple challenges. And the two challenges are hold fast and draw near. Now this hold fast, we've covered that before. And that's why it's important to, 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 to go through a book of the Bible and preach. Because when the author hits on something twice, it's really important. So that's what we're doing. We see that again. We see it's come up here. It came up earlier to, to hold fast the confession of our faith. So that's the first challenge. To cling to Christ. And the second is to draw near to the throne of grace. So hold fast, draw near, and then we're going to look at we're going to case for our trust. Hence the, the title of the message, the basis for trust. And then we're going to close with the motivation. Why? Why should we trust? And so that's where we're going this morning. And it's necessary, church, it's necessary to have a, a good understanding of, of theology and a good understanding of Scripture because it will help you endure through hardships. It'll help you endure tribulation. It'll help you endure trials. And it'll help you endure struggle. So first, hold fast. Again, back to verse 14 of chapter 4. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. So we are to stay committed to Christ. And saints must persevere. And it's all through the, the New Testament in Hebrews that we must persevere in faith as we've learned Faith is active, and, and, and faith to believe something is connected to faithfulness. So hold fast. James chapter 2, verse 17 uh, says this, So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So you can't do anything to earn your salvation. It's purely by faith through grace as a result of that salvation, there will be fruits in your life and there will be works in your life. There will be charity. There will be love. There will be uh, helping your neighbor. Those things are proof of the inner change uh, that God is doing in your life. And that's what the author is concerned with here. And he's saying regardless of what life brings, I must cling to Jesus. 
And so that's the message. Are, are we willing to, to, to pay the cost for, for following Jesus? And the cost of discipleship is, is real and we must cling to Jesus and hold fast. And there's going to be times when it's difficult. Even Jesus, when He was preaching, and his, uh, there were people following Him, disciples following Him. And he, uh, in John chapter 6, He's talking about, well, you must eat My flesh and, and drink My blood. That's a very strange saying. And, and, and when they heard this, His disciples heard this. Jesus, perceiving what they thought, said this in John chapter 6, verse 66, After this, many of the disciples turned back and no longer walked with Him. So, verse 6, and Peter says this, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And Peter determined to follow Jesus to the end. And, and the way I, 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 I translate that is, I've got nowhere else to go. Jesus is, is not, he's the best option. He's my only option. And He's the last uh, resource that I've got. I've tried everything else. There's nothing better than Jesus. And Lord, where else can we go? We followed everything else. Yes, we're going to follow You. Yes, we're going to hold fast to You. We have nothing else. Second, draw near. Verse 16, Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And this is key. So not only... Do you, I have to stay committed. Uh, you must draw near. And if you're going to persevere through difficult times, you must draw near. And this is about intimacy. This is uh, made possible by pulling us away. And if we don't make up our minds to press in, that's what will happen. At times, we are more like the first Adam. At times, we hide. Because we're full of shame and, and guilt and we're not convinced that God is as good as the Scriptures say that He is. We doubt it because we don't know Scripture well enough. We doubt the goodness of God and that He longs to, 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 for intimacy to draw us in. And, and we don't think that we can approach His throne of grace and mercy. We think of it only as a, a throne of judgment only, and we're terrified because of how guilty we are. And we're scared. We hide. We don't want God to come near. Afraid He'll expose us. And so as a result, we, we fall into patterns of sin. And it makes us more unwilling to come into His presence. We get caught up in these sinful lifestyles and these sinful choices and these sinful habits and, and we're ashamed and we don't come near to God to allow Him to refresh us, to cleanse us, and we don't repent and turn to Him because we're afraid. We don't trust His goodness. And so the more that we talk to God, the more that we pray, and the more that we read Scripture, we'll begin to have this confidence to approach God. Because as we'll see, it's all through here, all through our text this morning that we have a Savior that, that sympathizes and understands us in our weakness. So that's the two challenges. Hold fast and draw near. Next, we're going to talk about the basis for this. Or the basis for trust. This is where we're going to camp out this morning. So back up to verse 14 again. Something else we, we need to pull out here. Since then we, that's us, since we, church, have a, a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So, so Jesus is our high priest. He, he is our possession. And so priests, what, 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 when we think about priesthood, I, I, I think a lot of times we, we think about the person in the, the, the white collar that, that hears confession, and, and we don't have in mind the picture of the Levitical priesthood, which is what the author was talking about here. And this Levitical priest would mediate between God and man, and he would be, uh, you know, the in between, the, the go between, and, and he would go into the holy place, the holy of holies, 
once a year as a, as a representative of the people. And so what the author says here is that Jesus, He's not only our mediator, He takes us along with Him. And the reason we should draw near is because Jesus, our High Priest, has passed through. He has entered in. And He's brought us into a right relationship with a, a living God. And, and that's the most beautiful reality of the Christian faith. He understands our sin. He understands our pain. And He understands our suffering. And so according to our text this morning, Christ's sympathy is connected to our sin. And so God entered His, His own story. He became human to humanity. And yet it's still a little even deeper than that. He's God enough to save us and, and human enough to relate to us. Yes, He understands pain and suffering and sinfulness. Let's read verse 15 again. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. So sympathy, so that speaks of, of an emotion, a relatability, a, a, a empathy and, and compassion. And that's great, but, but we, we, we need a sympathy, right, church, that, that really helps. Not just, it's not doesn't stop at, well, I feel sorry for you. We need a sympathy that reaches us right where we're at and gives us hope to turn our lives around. And the sympathy of Jesus does just that. He has entrenched Himself in human suffering. There's a, a passage from Philippians 2. It says this, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though He was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied Himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So Jesus identifies with your suffering, identifies with my suffering. And verse 15 says that He was tempted just as we are. Now how, how, how can He sympathize with us uh, if He never sinned? Well, the first thing that needs to be said, He doesn't sympathize with sin. Nor should we sympathize with the sin of others, but He sympathizes with us because He knows the effects of sin. He knows what sin has done and what sin will do to us. And, and, and Jesus endured every temptation. He saw and felt all the brokenness of humanity all around Him. There's a quote by, by Dorothy Sayers, a Christian poet in I agree with this, and the quote is this, for whatever reason God chose to make man as He is, limited in suffering and subject to sorrows and death, He had the honor His own medicine. God understands suffering. And the writer of Hebrews is saying that, that, that God is willing, uh, He suffered with us, for us. And, and through Jesus, he, he, he got involved with the suffering of the world. And, and He identifies with it. And He's willing to help us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake, He made Him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. So Jesus became sin, but didn't the writer of Hebrews say that He... He was tempted but did not sin. So how do we what's going on here? Well, it's like this. Are you, I'm going to ask you a question. Are, are you comforted? I'm going to give, give you two options. Are you comforted or more comforted by, by, by someone who understands what you face? Or are you more comforted? 
uh, with, with Jesus who, who understands sin and, and all of its facets, and even on a deeper level than what you and I do, even when we commit it. He sympathizes. He, he knows. Ponder this verse. So he became, he became sin. No, he didn't become sinful, but he became sin. He took the, the judgment and the penalty of sin upon himself. And, and how can this be a comfort for us? And look, for, in order for our faith to be robust, we must understand this. This is vital. Because it, it will create confidence in Jesus Christ and allow us to cling to Jesus and, 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 and give us confidence that we can actually approach God and approach the throne of grace understanding and knowing that God understands you even in your weakness. He will empower you to face trials and temptations. So let's go back to Hebrews 5, verses 7 through 9, right here. So we're talking about Jesus under. This is the parallel verse for what uh, we just read. Hebrews chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers, loud cries, and tears to him who was able to save him from death. And he heard because of his. Reverence, although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. What this is talking about right here is the garden, the garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was crying in anguish and, and, and his, his sweat was like drops of blood, and, and he's praying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And what I believe was going on right there is that Jesus began at that moment. The sin of the world, he, he began to, to enter into that. He who knew no sin became sin. Knowing that, that He was to become something uh, that was so deep and, and so horrendous it would cause uh, His Father to look away momentarily. Jesus gets it. He understands the uh, effects of sin. And He can uh, understand it on a level that we can't even begin to. So He tasted the, the judgment that we committed so that we get the righteousness of God. It's the Gospel. And this is the essential Gospel. And it's vital that we get this. And this will get us through times of trial and persecution. You've got to study. You've got to show yourself approved. You've got to know what Scripture says about uh, the life you should live. What it says about Jesus. And what it says about the character of your Father. It will allow you to carry through. And we must embrace this. So we can never say that God does not understand. Scripture tells us plainly that He does. He took it. He took all of our weakness and our sin upon Himself so, so we don't even have to understand it fully. And listen, church, he, he, he doesn't just feel bad for our sinfulness. Scripture says that He actually got under it, carried it on His shoulders, passed through into heaven. Was, uh, he died and then He was resurrected and now He's seated at the right hand of the Father and He's calling us to draw near. He got under it, went through it, carried it. He's been exalted and He's calling out to you today, this morning. He delivers. Jesus delivers. God saves sinners. The reason we, 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 we go over this is I want our faith uh, uh, to increase in the depth of God's love and, and a God that understands your sins and your weaknesses. And so if you're struggling with something this morning, Jesus 
He took your sin to Himself and He suffered. And every time, church, that we climb the throne of our hearts and we determine what's right and wrong, Jesus gets it. He gets it. And He's sympathetic. And we've got to believe this. He is able to forgive. There is no sin too great. Forgiveness is possible because He knows all and He forgave all. As Amanda comes up to the piano, we've got one more point in our sermon this morning. And it's the motivation. Back to chapter 5, verses 8 and 9. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. So not only is Jesus sympathetic, he became uh, acquainted with obedience. He passed through it all. When it says that he learned obedience, it's not that he was disobedient before, but he became familiar with obedience because he passed through it with us and for us. And so church, we're going to face trials and tribulations. We're going to face trials and tribulations. Maybe it's a, a you know a personal loss, a death of a loved one, or maybe it's accusation. But we're going to face some things that we don't understand. And we need grace. We need grace and we need uh, compassion which will help us. Obedience is linked to salvation. And the Holy Spirit will give you the power to walk in obedience. And He may not remove the trial, but He will help you get through it. And that's the defining mark of a Christian church. That's the defining mark of a Christian. And it separates a true follower of Jesus from the rest of the world. Not that we deal with pain less, but we deal with it differently. A different foundation. A different hope and a different belief. Of the, the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. His first name is Horatio, Horatio Spafford. He, he lost his two daughters in the Atlantic. They drowned and they, 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 they died. And this is what he penned. Put pen to paper says this, When sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. He discovered something about His Father, about Jesus. And, and, and we are being called to enter into intimacy with Jesus Christ, to keep on, to enter in, to press in, to, to never stop. And look, what you think about God is incredibly important. Church, He's not just some, some genie in a bottle that when we want something, we rub it and He gives us what we want. That's not the God of the Bible. And if we have this view, we're missing out on the beauty, the beauty and the, the profound power of who God really is. And there's a lot of false and faulty teachings out there that say that God wants you to have uh, multiple homes and multiple vehicles and property and to have IRAs and 401ks that are bountiful and flowing over. There's teachings out there that say you should never be sick as a believer. And if you are sick, it's because you don't have enough faith. And that's not what Scripture teaches. That's simply not what the New Testament teaches. Nor is it a reality. Suffering marks the life of a believer. Does God bless? Absolutely He blesses. Does God provide? Absolutely He provides. Does God heal? Absolutely He heals. But it's all for Him to receive glory. And so we should want a relationship with God above and over anything else in this world. And we should have a robust 
understanding of our faith in Christ. That's why we're doing Dig Deeper. That's why we do Bible studies. That's why we do expository preaching. If you're not grounded in Scripture, anything that comes along can throw you off course. It's important to understand and to have a, a healthy understanding. It's the only thing that will get you through the day. We, we worship Jesus. There's nothing above the supremacy of Jesus Christ. Scripture is authoritative. It's, a, it's one of the guides for our faith. And, 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 and when we understand what Scripture teaches about our purpose here on earth and about the presence of the Holy Spirit that will allow us to go through suffering, just like the audience here in Hebrews, they were about to be martyred, some of them. Some of them, about their families would turn their backs on them because they believed in Jesus. But the writer of Hebrews is saying, hold fast, draw near. You've got a high priest. Last thing in closing, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Theologian, pastor, living in the time of, of Adolf Hitler's Germany. He was executed. And this is what he said. He said, the key to everything in him is Christ as He was being executed. So we must persevere on the life, the sayings, the teachings of Jesus and the death and resurrection of Jesus. He understands. You can trust Him this morning. Hold fast to the confession of your faith and draw near. And so this morning, I want, as Amanda uh, begins to play, I want to open up this altar for anybody here that wants to come and pray. And, and maybe you're going through something. Maybe you don't even, you've never even given your life to Jesus. Now is the time. Today is the day. And for some of you who have, you've, you've got a relationship with God, but, but, but you don't really know that God is good. And, and when you do something wrong, you don't really want to approach God because you feel scared and you're afraid. I challenge you this morning to sit with what you've heard. To continue to read Scripture until you're convinced the Holy Spirit convinces you good. And He desires that relationship with you He's faithful to forgive. So some of us have some hang-ups this morning, some, uh, maybe some habits this morning. Some of us just have some bad ideas this morning about God and about what it means to follow Christ. I challenge myself and I challenge all of us to repent from those ideas, repent from those habits, and turn fully toward God this morning. As Amanda sings this last song, if, you, if you're unsure of where you stand with God, I would encourage you to get on your knees at the altar this morning. If you're struggling with something, uh, I'll be here to pray with you. We've got a prayer team that will pray with you. You're invited to come up. I implore you to come up. The Holy Spirit is here. I encourage you. If not, sit there. Sit with this message and pray from your seat and ask the Holy Spirit to empower you to hold fast and to draw near to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Give us the power to draw near and to hold fast and to continue seeking you, Father. Your Spirit move this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I pray for my brothers. I pray for Scott and Robbie. Lord, just wrap around them. I thank you for the work that you're doing in their lives. 
Lord, I pray that as temptation comes, as, as, as times of, of, of drifting come, that you would come around them and give them strength to carry on. Lord, fill them right now with just a, a, an outpouring of your Spirit. Just flood them with peace and anointing right now change the course God if they if they were headed towards something that may be dangerous right now we pray you change the course and Lord uplift them encourage them give them strength embrace them fill them with just the mighty power of your Holy Spirit nothing of this world can satisfy nothing satisfies like you Jesus bless my brothers here this morning thank you for them Bless them with an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Bless them, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. all stand and Father I thank you so much for Asbury I thank you for every single person that's here this morning that's sitting in these chairs Lord we know that you uh, love us and you're seeking us out continually Lord help us to turn towards you and to receive uh, Your good gifts of grace. And Lord, just give us uh, more of Your Holy Spirit so that we can walk in power, so that we can hold fast to the confession of our faith. And Father, draw us nearer to You. Individually and collectively as a whole, here at Asbury, just draw us nearer to You. And pour Your compassion and Your love in us, Lord, so that we can show it to this world. And Lord, for each of these dear saints here, I pray that You go with them, Lord, and bring them back here next week, Father. And help us, remind us, Holy Spirit, everything that we do is for Your glory. Bless Your people, but above all, bless Your glorious name. In Your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.